Basketball Talk Pro. Well, today we have a, a, another look at the relationship between a, a coach and a player and his team, uh, and that is correction, correcting players. I spoke about this a couple other times, but I want to approach it from just a little different look because as I go around and see things, I understand uh, better how, how I can uh, help you um, by uh, talking to you about the things that, I, that are important in coaching. And I don't think there's any more important thing that you do than co correct your players. And uh, if you don't do that, uh, you're going to have some problems. Well, I think the first place we've got to start is uh, why do you correct? What's the purpose uh, of it? Basically, it's this. Players don't really know uh, if they're doing something wrong uh, or something right. Uh, they, they don't see themselves. They have to feel themselves. And so you are the person that can help them uh, through their feeling of what is correct and what is not uh, correct. Uh, and if you don't do that, then players will uh, continue to do things wrong. Uh, if you do not correct a player because you think he knows what's wrong or right, uh, he can continue to do it wrong indefinitely and probably bring a lot of his teammates uh, along with him. So the art of correction, the ability to do that, is always reflected in one thing, and that is, are the players doing what you want them to do? I get this response a lot. Well, I told them. Well, telling them is not necessarily correcting them. You tell them what you want them to do, but they have to know when they're wrong and not doing it. That is correction, and that will bring about the results that you want. Well, enough said about that. Uh, I think probably that's self-evident to most uh, coaches, uh, but how do you correct? This is where the art comes in. This is where experience pays off. This is where preparation uh, pays off. So how do you correct in a way that gets results? First of all, remember this. Keep this in the back of your mind always. That each player will learn a little differently to get the same uh, results. Uh, but I don't want you to become a psychologist on this, you know, uh, about this vision of every player learns a little bit differently. You can carry that too far. But just keep it in mind. Uh, and then I think the uh, next step is how much do you correct? What I see is some are too little. Some are too much. Um, and for some players, it's too little. For other players, it's too much. Uh, we, I have a kind of a personal law or principle that I follow on this. When we teach something new to the players, then a lot of correction is required. Personally, I correct everything and everybody uh, in this period of the learning. Uh, I may spend more time sometimes on the players that don't really count, that aren't going to play a lot because they're doing it wrong. But I continue to do that because if I get them to do it correctly, it will speed up all our drills, all our offense and defense and play. But more than that, I want everybody in the uh, 
on the team to hear these corrections over and over and over again. Well, uh, once you have players that now you see that they know what they're supposed to do, they don't correct their errors if they don't do it right once or twice somewhere along the line. All players will have a mental, if not a physical, little breakdown uh, in, in, in using their technique correctly. But if I know that they can do it, uh, I'm not going to stop and make a correction there. Now sometimes I'm a little vague on whether I really know whether they know it or not. I may say something, but I don't correct really. I just point out something. And usually the remark I get from the players then is, I know coach. Uh, you know, they, they're aware of it. They knew they did it wrong. I don't need to correct them. I don't need to demonstrate that sort of thing. Which brings up the next point. One good way of correcting players is through demonstration. So they can get a visual look at what it's supposed to look like. And from that visual look, get a feel for how they can do it. Uh, but remember this, they also need to know when they're right because they can struggle along and you can keep saying you're wrong, you're wrong. But when they do it right, they must know that it's right. That's the feeling that they need to, to uh, uh, put into their minds and their body. Uh, so they have to be, no, you're right. Well, that was right. Then I can do that again. Um, so, that's a part uh, uh, of correction. Demonstration, you got to be careful with. If you're good enough to do it right, you can demonstrate. If you're not good enough to do it right and get somebody else to demonstrate that can do it and then teach them how to do it right and practice them so he knows how to do it it right because he's got the same problem he has to, he can't see it he's got to feel it so you're going to have to work with that guy a little bit if you have an assistant coach uh, that is well drilled and you know he can do these things then make sure you don't just throw him in there and practice uh, unless you know he really knows how to how to do it the other thing I would say about uh, correcting, how to correct, is do it slowly. Have them do it slowly. Anybody who's watched these videos where I introduce something, the first time I have them do it, I have them walk through it. Uh, maybe it's more of a quick walk uh, or a slow run, uh, one or the other. But I slow everything down so that they can feel uh, how things uh, are to, how you do things. you got time for your mind to catch up and uh, help you uh, through it. I have always told coaches uh, to learn how to play an instrument. I've told everybody, I tell all coaches that. Because that's it, a wonderful way for you to learn about learning. Because you will need to know about learning in order to uh, practice an instrument and play uh, an instrument. And one thing you will learn very quickly with a good teacher is they ask you to do it very slowly, almost like, uh, you know, like the next note is never going to be played. Uh, but that's how they know that you can learn all the things you need to do with your fingers and your lips and your throat uh, that uh, will produce the sound and produce the music that you want. Do it very slowly at first. Let them get used to it. Coaches are so in a hurry. Skill, you've got to go fast. You've got to look good. Uh, let it, let it, that come. It comes. It doesn't make any difference if it's today or tomorrow or the next day. The important thing is that you get it done right. Well, there's another aspect to this. To correct correctly, 
you must see correctly. Vision, your vision, is very, very important in the correction process. There's a, just a human nature that this happens. Your perception of something. Your perception of what you see is generally what you want to see. Uh, you, you had to have this happen to you. Where you look and you see a guy, you think, boy, what a great rebounding night he had. Then you go to the stats and you find out he had two rebounds all night. But you happen to see those two. Uh, and those were what you were looking for. Um, so your perception uh, has to be trained to see what you need to see, not what you want to see. Uh, and that goes for the, who the players are. There's no uh, special arrangement with your star players in this. You correct everybody. There, you, you can't, you can't uh, be afraid of your stars is a thing that Al McGuire told me a long time ago and it's good advice. They, they deserve the same kind of correction that everybody else uh, gets and they need it just like everybody uh, else. So be aware that you tend to see what you want to see. Narrow vision, number two. Some people have very narrow vision. They focus on one thing, usually where the ball is. Uh, or they get intrigued with some player doing something great and they think about the player's play instead of seeing what the rest of the team is doing which may be doing it all wrong, uh, but, the, but the one place they're looking is done all right. You must widen your vision. You can do that. You know, I, I worked with Don Nelson, and he, he always told me, I can see all five players on both teams at once. Well, I don't think he could, but I didn't say that, anything to him. But uh, basically, that is what every coach would love to be able to do. You can come close. Uh, I don't know if you can get them all, but you can come very, very close. I think Nelly was guessing on some of those people that uh, uh, that five. But uh, the idea is to teach yourself how to have a wider look. So. You're not just focusing on one thing and people are doing something wrong over here. You can correct more than one person. You know, you can correct this person and say, by the way, uh, you were wrong. You, you need to do this or whatever. Widen your vision. And then there's emotional vision. With emotional vision, I'm talking about the coach getting emotionally involved in the mistake getting uh, to the point where anger uh, enters in and then you attack the player uh, with your correction. And uh, you, you'll have a lot of problems with this eventually. Uh, you don't allow yourself to make this an emotional thing. This is not an emotional thing. You're, a, you're teaching. You're helping your player by correcting them. Uh, if they do it wrong over and over again, you have to learn the self-control not to lose yourself emotionally uh, and keep correcting, keep helping uh, all the way through the, uh, the process. Then there's what I call untrained vision. I went to a, a, a piano competition one time. My daughter was playing and uh, my daughter's teacher was sitting next to me and she's an internationally well-known concert pianist. And uh, I, this, this boy got up and played me. I thought he was terrific. And I told him, I said, wasn't well, that great? And she said, he was wrong. I said, how could he be wrong? It was wonderful. She said, to the untrained ear, 
it sounds good. To the trained ear, he was wrong. He was playing it wrong. Well, it kind of put me in my place, and I'm glad she did, because that is true with us as coaches also. And I think a big part of that comes from your preparation for whatever you're going to teach players. You're going to work with players. Um, you have to know a drill. I see so many coaches that don't really know the drill. So, you know, they, they have a vision of what it's going to do for their team, but they don't really know the subtleties of the drill. Uh, and so they don't see those things. Their vision is blurred. Um, prepare yourself. Know the drill backwards and forwards. Um, every drill, you should have so well, you know it so well, that you can connect with any correction that you need to. Well, that covers most of it. I want to say one more thing about it. Film correction is the best probably corrective device that you have. Um, if they can see yourself right on the film and you point it out to them, uh, and then you can pack it up, you can let them see it again and again until they can see very clearly what they were doing right or wrong. And again, in film work, don't just point out what's wrong. Point out what's right. Because this is how the players get the feel for what is right uh, and wrong. But I think films are the best teacher and coach uh, of, of all things um, because they're factual, they're true. There's no fooling with them. And the players know it. I mean, the players may say, I'm doing it right, you know, they, they may uh, give you all kinds of excuses. But when they see it on film, I can tell you this, they just shut up and say, yeah, I was wrong. Uh, and so film correction uh, is a very good way uh, to get your players to do what you want them to do. Well, that's it for today.